Sicilian banks. And the speaker will be Rather Van Zalo. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, my name is Radovan Jalic. Uh, thank you all for coming to my presentation. Uh, I will just have to apologize if I sneeze during the presentation because I have a spring allergy. Uh, I've done this research all together with my colleagues, Professor Melenka Žakić of Simunic and Professor Boris Beraglašić, and we named the multi criteria decision analysis model for ranking the Serbian banks. So, uh, as we all know, in, in an economy of any country, banks as financial institu institutions play a vital role as they represent the mediator between the one in need of capital and on the other side, uh, the ones who have a capital surplus. In other words, uh, we cannot have a successful economy without having uh, successful banks and vice versa. Uh, as we know, any problem that, that can occur in the banking sector uh, directly influences the general economy. So, uh, because of that, evaluating the performance of banks is very important. It provides useful information for investors, creditors, and other stakeholders. So, uh, now I'm going to say something uh, a little bit about the Serbian banking uh, sector. So, the banking system is certainly one of the leading areas of transition in Serbia in the Serbian economy, and the transition process began in 2002 when the country had uh, close to 90 banks. So in the two next years, around 2003, uh, that, that number was half. Some uh, of the banks were liquidated, and some of them have emerged with others. So uh, today in Serbia we have around, we have around uh, 30 banks. Uh, Uh, banking system is certainly a special function in a way uh, that it, it has gained uh, full trust among its citizens and does not uh, encourage the entrepreneurs to start the, uh, the small businesses. So, uh, one, uh, I think the evaluation uh, of the performance is one of the ways to, uh, to gain that confidence. Uh, so, uh, today the situation is that uh, we uh, always on the market have the three or four large banks that uh, coexist with the uh, other small banks. And uh, uh, in the future, the large banks will acquire the small ones, and, or the small ones uh, will be forced to seek for a strategic partner in the aim to remain in the turbulent market game. So, uh, because of globalization and extremely competitive uh, business environment, uh, merge, mergers and acquisitions have become popular all over the world, especially in the banking industry. Uh, Parker said that one of the most important activities of the management's control function is to measure uh, is the measurement of performance. So bank, banks uh, have their own reasons to measure the performance. Some of them, them are to identify whether the organization is successful for both themselves and their shareholders, to identify whether they are meeting customer requirement by measuring satisfaction, to confirm the facts or reveal what they do not know, to identify problems in improvement spots, ensure decisions are based on real data and not on supposition as, uh, and uh, assumptions, uh, to show whether the results of planned improvements are positive, and so on. So the most, co most common way of measuring fi financial performance and the quality of banks is the calculation of financial ratios. And uh, we all know that entities that are characterized by more than one indicator is very difficult to rank. So although, although it seems quite simple and feasible, uh, mo most of the time it is uh, almost impossible to use all the criteria and to turn them into a joint unit which can refer to the same value. Uh, so, uh, during the years, many different theories and methods uh, for performance evaluation have been applied uh, and some of them are ratio analysis, scandals, Delphi analysis, balanced scorecard, AHP, TOPSIS, CPA and other methods. And each method has its own basic concept, aim advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so, in the most of the papers, we, uh, we, can, we can see the combination of two different multi criteria decision making methods that are uh, used in a fuzzy environment with uh, combining several ratios. But in array cases, we have the comparison with other methods. So, uh, aim of this study was to propose the fuzzy multi criteria decision making model to evaluate the performance of banks. And we 
uh, done this research among 10 banks, uh, which uh, was uh, selected uh, based on the criteria of uh, uh, net profit before taxes. And we used uh, 36 different financial ratios. Uh, so we used the fuzzy uh, HP method to uh, obtain the rates for the, uh, for the indicators. And we used Toxis method to random penalties, and then we used the Vicor method uh, to uh, to rank the banking performance and to compare it with the Toxis with the results uh, obtained with the Toxis method. So uh, why Vicor and Toxis? But we, uh, because these two methods are used uh, yeah, uh, because both both are based on the aggregated function representing the closeness to the window. So uh, HP. Uh, present the powerful method to solve complex decision problems because any complex problem with this method can be decomposed into several sub-problems. And uh, all the time experts are using nine-point scale uh, and through pairwise comparison they give the relative importance of both criteria and sub-criteria. But um, as Young and Chen state that the pure HP model has some disadvantages and uh, they are summarized uh, as follows. So the HP methods is mainly used in newly decreased information decision applications, uh, creates and deals with a very unbalanced scale of judgments, and uh, this scale of 1 to 9 uh, has advantage of simplicity, but does not take into account the uncertainty associated with the mapping of one's judgment to a number. But because of all these uh, disadvantages of uh, pure HP method, uh, we try to incorporate fuzzy theory together, together with, uh, with pure HP. So uh, we uh, imported the fuzzy theory into HP. Uh, because of the calculation feature and easiness, uh, triangle, we use the triangle of fuzzy number. And on the left graph, uh, we can see the triangle metrician function. And in the table, uh, we can see the fuzzy conversion scale that was used. Um, about uh, about hier uh, hierarchical structure of the model, uh, experts in the field of um, financial performance analysis uh, of in independent uh, in independent institutions for uh, bank ranking uh, gave us the propositions which uh, financial ratios to use. So our hierarchical model consists of basically of three, three levels. On the first level we have the bank ranking uh, or the financial performance and then we have on the second level the seven groups. So the first group is liquidity, efficiency, profitability, capital adequacy, assets quality, income expenditure uh, structure and sector of share. So on the third level uh, we, we here have the financial ratios which are used among the, each, each uh, group. And of course, we use the 10, 10 banks. So uh, here we can see that there are 36 financial ratios and uh, abbreviations of, uh, of, of sub-criteria are given in the paperwork. So here are just some, some of uh, financial uh, ratios. So in the liquidity, for example, we have the cash and cash equivalents divided by total deposits and so on. So, uh, or financial ratios are calculated basic, uh, based on pu publicly available annual reports of banks of uh, 2012 year, and they, they can be found on Serbian Business Register Agency website. Uh, the fairways comparison scores were carried out by experts in the field of financial analysis, and uh, of course, to, to determine the, if the fairways comparison are consistent or not. We use the consistency rate, ratio, ratio formula that is shown below, and uh, maybe we can jump over this. So we we calculate the consistency index and random consistency index to, to obtain the consistency ratio formula. And here we have the table for uh, random consistency index and scale of relative importance for pairwise comparison. So if uh, if um, consistency ratio is below uh, 0 0.1, the parallel comparison matrix is uh, considered to be consistent e enough. If not, the comparison matrix should be improved. Uh, 
as we use the triangle of fuzzy numbers in fuzzy Yankar Bay, uh, and the result of fuzzy synthetic decision of each alternative is a fuzzy number, therefore the death, death fuzzification uh, need to be done. So we uh, need to obtain the best non-fuzzy performance value. Uh, so there are several methods that are used for death fuzzification, and in this study we decided to use the sense of, of area method because of its simplicity. Um, so here is the uh, list of the banks that uh, that were used, uh, which uh, financial reports were used uh, for um, for this research. Uh, so fuzzy HP is used to determine the weights for sub criteria and main criteria, and TOPSIS is used for final ranking. So here we have the basic methodology. I can jump over this because this is a, a little bit of theory. Uh, so we have here the steps, steps of, um, of fuzzy AHP method and uh, here is the fuzzy progress comparison matrix for the financial main, uh, main criteria. Uh, so here we can see the synthetic values for, for example for main criteria that are cal calculated and using this equation we, we get the the probability, and then, uh, then uh, we compare each synthetic value and we calculate by this this formula the probability of of uh, every of every synthetic value. And after comparison, priority weights of main criteria are calculated by the, for, by the formula that uh, we are uh, seeking for minimum value. So, for example, here is 0 0.338, and uh, at the end we calculated weight vector is given given here and when we normalize it we get the weights for a main criteria. The same steps are used to calculate and weights for the sub criteria. Uh, so uh, then we uh, use the TOPSIS methodology or technique for order performance by similarity to ideal, to ideal solution that is widely used multi-criteria decision uh, method. Uh, uh, based on, uh, uh, that method is based on the concept that here that the chosen alternative should be the shortest distance from the positive ideal solution and the farthest distance from the negative ideal solution for solving, solving this problem. Uh, so here are some steps of TOPSIS. First we, we do the normalization by using this formula and then we are, we are calculating the weighted normalized decision matrix by, by uh, multiplying normalized matrix with the weights that we obtain in the, using the fuzzy HP method. Then we calculate the positive ideal solution, negative ideal solution, then the distance from the positive distance from the negative, and at the end we calculate the closeness coefficient of each alternative. So um, if we, for example, have the distance from the negative ideal uh, needs to be the one, so it's the part is because of the normalization. So uh, the best value is the option with the CC uh, coefficient poses to 1. Uh, so, so here is the big table. Uh, on the left side we have the all main criteria and, all, and uh, with, with it weights. So then we have the financial ratios uh, within each group that were used. And here is the total values of financial main, main criteria for each bank. Uh, so, for example, for assets quality, uh, assets quality uh, example of calculation. So we have the financial ratios that were calculated, then we done the normalization, then we get the weighted normalization, and in the end we get the total value. So the same calculation is done for other main criteria. Uh, on this table here, uh, weights and total values of main criteria for each bank are presented. Uh, and we can see here that most important financial main criterion is S quality because it has the biggest weight. So, uh, using this table, we calculate, we, we are going to, to steps of using the TOPSIS method and calculate the positive, negative, uh, ideal solutions, distance from them, and uh, closeness coefficient. So, at the end, we get this table. And we can see that the best rank is for commercial bank, and uh, the worst one, uh, worst uh, performance here, the Societe Generale. After
after that, um, we are using the Wicker methodology uh, to, to see what we'll get uh, with, the, with this. So, um, in the Wicker methodology, uh, we have that uh, we have a compromise ranking method. And the compromise solution is determined which could be accepted by decision makers because it, pro it provides a maximum group utility of the majority with measure S, which represents the concordance, and the minimum of individual regret with the opponent, uh, which, in which is representing the discordance. So here we have also some steps basic of the record method. Um, The first one is to calculate the maximum group utility, and the, and the other one is to calculate the individual regret. So, um, in our work, we set that uh, coefficient for group utility set to 0.8, uh, whereas the weight for individual regret uh, 0 0.2. Uh, at the end, uh, we get the table uh, and uh, three different uh, lists for S, R, and Q, and the best one is with the minimum uh, coefficient, coefficient the Q. So here uh, we have the results obtained by Fazia, Apetopsis, and uh, Wicker met method. So we can see that both methods, uh, when applied, we get the commercial bank is the first rank, and the Societe Generale has the last bank. All the other um, all the other banks uh, have the, almost the same ranking, and the difference appears because these two methods have a different approach. Both methods are based on aggregate aggregating function representing the closeness to the ideal, but the weaker uh, method um, introduces the ranking index based on the particular measure opposed to the ideal. And Topsis, beside that, uh, is um, is uh, showing the shortest distance and, uh, from the ideal solution and the farthest distance from the negative solution. So uh, the main difference appears in the aggregation approach where Vicor takes in account and the worst values of criteria and some alternatives that have a good average uh, score with the one low criteria uh, could have a low total result. So uh, the conclusion is uh, that during the global economic crisis, performance measure measurement is very important for all sectors of the economy, so including in the banking sector, and the uh, global trend is consolidation of capital and measures. Uh, and we see the most important financial main criterion uh, we get uh, during this research is assets quality, and the second important is capital adequacy. So under the main criteria, assets quality ratio provision costs divided by total assets is the more, most important. Uh, and under the main criterion of capital adequacy, we have the ratio of total liability. Li liabilities uh, divided by equity as the most important sub-criteria. Uh, so by comparing these two different methods, we can see So by, by comparing these two methods, uh, we can see that almost the same ranking can be... Uh, by comparing these two methods, we can see that almost the same... I don't know, but he's changing... Uh, uh, by comparing these two methods, we can see that uh, we can get almost the same ranking by, uh, by using the two different methods. Uh, that is fuzzy HP and Topsis method on one hand, and the Wicker method with the coefficient of uh, 0.8 for the strategy of maximum group, group utility on the other hand. Uh, the aim of this research was to construct the fuzzy AKP and the fuzzy HP and Topsis model to evalu evaluate the bank performance in Serbian banking sector and to compare this result with the ones that are obtained in the Wicker method uh, and to provide a con contribution to the practice of multi-criteria decision-making. So
So uh, this evaluation uh, has purpose to show practitioners that integration of fuzzy logic to traditional ev evaluation models could help them deal with, with imprecision. Uh, limitation or uh, spots of improvement, uh, this study like any other uh, have uh, several limitations that warrant more research, like uh, non-financial indicators that are uh, uh, also uh, very important for a bank as an institution. And some, some of them are uh, customer satisfaction, number of newly added customer service quality, and etc. Importing the non-financial indicators into this research could be one way of improvement. And um, as stated before, Tox's method, Tox's method introduces two reference points. First, first is uh, the farthest distance from the negative ideal solution and the shortest distance from the ideal. But it does not consider the relative importance of that distances. Uh, that could that could be also one way of, of improvement in the further research. And uh, also there exists uh, other worth investigating uh, multi-criteria decision making uh, methods are, uh, such as elective or uh, In future research results from this paper might be compared with ones obtained from some other methods. And also um, one, one of the improvements is uh, to take into consideration the the few, few years, because here we used just one year, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, any questions? I have. Uh, no. but go on, go on. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. It was very informative. Um, my question is about the record method. How exactly did you define the number 0 0.8 for the maximum group utility for the bell variable? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, thank you Usually, the... what I see in the papers is uh, more or less a standard value of 0 0.5. What I've seen in the past. Yes, but because uh, here on, uh, in our research we have a group um, of um, uh, not just uh, one man who gave us the Highways comparison. So, because we had the group mm -hmm. which uh, had done the compa uh, the, the previous comparison, we needed uh, to set this to 0 0.5 because we want to have the maximum group utility, you know, mm -hmm. and not the did, that was important that uh, group uh, group utility be the, the more than uh, individual, yeah, more than, more important than individual regret mm -hmm. of every. Member of the group. Okay. Well, I have some comments. First, uh, when you use the AHP, no matter if it is fuzzy or not, when you have more than seven criteria, it's very difficult to do the comparison. Yes. Usually, you start doing like logical ways. Yes. So, I don't believe it's a good approach to have that to get the weights. Mm -hmm. I think you should do it with something else to have, to have the weights. That's, that's a comment. The second one is also like, I see that you use the, the fuzzy, the, the fuzzy triangles and so on to compare. But it is difficult to ask someone to compare the, the two triangles. You know? So in the end, they are going to use like a piece of value. And one of your, uh, that you were doing is that you were using like these study sets as a comparison by criticizing the scale of the AHP. But there are other scales that you can use with the AHP. And I'm a fuzzy person. Oh, okay. there are other I'm just saying that there are other scales on the AHP that make your job easier because when you are using these triangles, because you have lots of lots of sub criteria. It's just, yes, it, that's why I'm saying this critic is that if it was a small problem, that it would be a different story. But when you go to these big problems, I'm not sure if you are not making mistakes that you don't even notice when you go after. That's that is my question. You know, yes, so but I use some macros and scripts that I made. To automatically to calculate these this things, yeah. yes, this even is. though I'm, I'm having doubts about because of the scales, you know, oh, the scales okay. are not logical in the way that you think. So, <laughs> and, uh, I wrote about this. So, my, may, maybe you should go, you know, I, why not use just the tops and the bigger and, and then compare the values with this? I didn't understand why you need the fuzzy HP. 
why, why did you select this fund? I selected this fund because um, uh, I, um, the, I wanted to, because the, how to say, the pure AHP, I used for Pearson, Pearson just the, the crisp values, so from one to nine. So I want to, uh, because the decision maker uh, sometimes need, uh, uh, he cannot, uh, how to say, uh, express, okay. express, uh, express yourself just in, uh, in nine, nine points, you know. Yeah. So, the so decision maker is, yeah. sometimes he, uh, he need to decide one or, or three or three or five. Yeah. But sometimes he he may be think three point five. So yeah. because that's of that, that is a, one of the things is that when you have these big problems, we humans cannot handle more than like the magical number seven plus two more two. And uh, so it's very difficult. You start making these types you know, where you have more criteria. So it's not really a good tool to use when you have lots of criteria.
where we are very individual centric and we, we are trying to extract the knowledge of a single decision maker in most of the cases or a, or a small group of the decision makers so we have these two extreme points but when we are talking about the marketing problems we are somewhere in between we don't want to, to oversimplify our problem and and, at, and attribute some inferences to the whole population. On the other hand, we don't want to focus on every single consumer. We want to make some inferences about some small, possibly, possibly small groups in the, in the market. And we believe that those groups are somehow, to an extent, homogeneous among themselves. And when we are comparing the groups together, there are enough sufficient evidence that these groups, they, they have sort of differences between them, right? So, in order to establish a, an approach to analyze these, well, to get some insights into this source of the problems, we start with the uh, multi-criteria decision-aiding approach. How, how can we make some inferences? How can we discover the preference model of a single consumer? Then we consider a set of possibly large number of consumers and we want to extract the preference model of the, those set of consumers. So, to start with, uh, I need to say that we, we, are in, in, we, we are following this paradigm, the disaggregation approach, where we have a set of holistic judgments, so we have uh, some holistic preferences of the consumers or decision makers and we want to disaggregate this information in order to extract a, a preference model that's valid for this decision maker. And the preference model in, in our approach is represented by a set of value functions or a set of criteria, right? So what's the problem? The problem is that we have a set of alternatives, let's say a set of cars, and we have a set of attributes to evaluate each of those alternatives. Like maybe I can borrow the criteria from your presentation. You want you, you velocity, price, and design. So this could be a set of attributes to, to describe each of these alternatives. Then a potential consumer might provide a, his or her holistic judgments or preferences by providing a ranking over this set of alternatives, right? Then what we, what we want to extract from this information is to represent, well, to analyze, to decompose these holistic preferences and to represent the preference model of the consumer with set of value functions, right? So, uh, is it clear? Yes. So the approach that is followed in UTA methodology is well, first this, to discretize, uh, to discretize the, the, land, the, the criteria, the attribute, by defining a set of landmarks, breakpoints. Then, please ignore these part and just let's focus on these two terms, the constraints. These two constraints in the UTA methodology are introducing the preferences of the consumer, the decision maker. So, if the decision maker says that I prefer the alternative A n over the alternative A n plus 1, so this is supposed to be the preference relation. So, if the decision maker is stating that, then we need, we need to construct a constraint that's saying that the, the, the comprehensive value, the global value of this alternative should be greater than the global value of the other alternative. It's very intuitive. Uh, and if there's a tie between those two alternatives, then the, the, the global values should be apparently equal. The thing is that if you just look at the global values, then we might end up with an empty solution space. That's why we introduced two new terms, which are the overestimation errors and underestimation errors that might occur in the evaluations that are made by the decision maker or consumer. Right? And the aim is to minimize these, uh, these over underestimation and overestimation errors to end up with a set of hopefully representative value functions. 
And one uh, issue in this methodology is that the value functions are considered to be monotonic. So the value function are not allowed to change monotonicity over the scale. But it is, uh, it is non-linear. It's, in fact, piecewise linear value function. So we, we are trying to establish our methodology based on this approach. To extend this approach, this approach in order to address the heterogeneity among the set of consumers. So why heterogeneity is important for, for us? Why heterogeneity is particularly important for the market researchers? The thing is that understanding heterogeneity is one of the most important issues that uh, is considered in marketing mix decisions. The decisions on the product, on the base, on the promotion and on the price of the product. So in order to make such decisions, we need to have a clear idea about the preferences that, that exist among the consumers, their differences and their similarities. Uh, despite its importance, uh, it also can be viewed as one of the greatest challenges in marketing. It's, it's not easy to be answered. And uh, understanding heterogeneity is also very important for the, for the customer's centric paradigm and, and marketing. So despite the economical approach, we need to focus more on, on our customers and to, to address their needs and, their, their, and consider their preferences in developing the products. So the, the, the problem that we have here, despite the individual centric here, we have a set of consumers, and each of them might have different formal value functions, different preference models. So these preference models, similar to the UTA that suppose that is extracted by analyzing, by, by disaggregating the holistic information, but these preferences are, are expected to be totally different because they are coming from different consumers. But at the same time, these preferences are belonging to the same community of the consumers, the consumers of this product. So obviously they have something in common. At least they are belonging to the same population, right? So it will be not precise to extract each of those preference models separately. We need to consider the commonality among these preference models. For this issue, we, we try to establish our methodology by the following idea. So the, the sequence that I'm presenting is not exactly the sequence in the methodology, I, I'll explain later. So first, let's suppose that we are extracting the value function for each, for each consumer separately, right? The idea is to somehow shrink these preference models, these value functions, for a value function which can be representative for the whole population, the population preference model. Right? Then we can see the differences and the similarities that exist among the preference models in, in, in this case. So what we are doing in our methodology is not to estimate these value functions and then in the second stage shrinking them, but we are trying to do the bo both things at the same time. And the way that you are doing that is by penalizing the, the, the value functions, the preference models that are distant from the preference model which is representative for the whole population. The important thing is that when you are measuring this distance and when you are penalizing the value functions that are far from the population value function, we need to look at the distribution of the preference over the criteria. So, in the directions where we have less variation among the consumers, then intuitively we need, we need to penalize more the value functions which are far from the population preference model. So, if most of the consumers are very similar in, in a, in, in a um, let's say, sub-interval of the criterion, and a single consumer is far from those consumers, then this distance should be penalized more compared to the case that we have higher variation level among the, the, among, among the consumers. So this is the idea. To model that, we use the, well, 
We use the Mahalanobis distance, which has these interesting properties to see to, when actually it considers the distribution and the penalization term is uh, satisfying the property that we needed. So considering the, the variation among the, among the consumers. So in this formulation, we look at the value function over a single criterion for a single consumer and we analyze the distance of this value function from the, from the one which is representative for the whole population using the Mahalanobis distance which comes from the covariance that exists among the all value functions for each consumer. Right? Then the, the rest of the formulation will be considering the uh, preference information of the decision makers so it's not, uh, it, it's somehow similar to the UTA methodology. We, we just need to consider the, to build up those constraints based on the information that we obtain from the ranking list. All right. So by developing the mathematical program to find the, the representative value functions for the consumers, we need to minimize the objective function, which is a trade-off between two terms. The first one is minimizing the overestimation and underestimation errors for each consumer as we had before. The second one is to penalize the value functions that are distant from the population value functions. So the final solution comes from a trade-off between these two and the trade-off term is introduced by, by this normal parameter here. The good news is that this formulation is quadratic. The bad news is that it is not convex. So, uh, it is not convex because there are some interactions. Well, despite its, its uh, appearance that, okay, we have here a distance, so it should be a convex problem, why not? But uh, because of, yeah, but because of the interaction between these two decision variables, the Haitian matrix is not going to be positive semi-definite and the problem is not convex. Again, the good news is that we can estimate the optimal value for the population before solving this problem. So by doing that, it is not very difficult to prove that the optimal value for the population is the average over all these individual preference models. So by doing that and adjusting, reformulating the objective function, we end up with a convex, a convex uh, program which is not very difficult to solve. So, uh, given this parameter and this covariance matrix, we have a, con we have a convex quadratic program which should be solved. So, we, we, we proposed this heuristic approach to obtain the final solutions. So, first we estimate for each consumer the individual preference models, we initiate the covariance matrix, then using this covariance matrix, we update the value functions for each consumers. Then again, we update the covariance matrix until we converge to the final solution. By convergence, we mean, we mean that no change occurs in the values of this covariance matrix. Obviously, if, if in two iterations the covariances are the same, then the, solution, the final solution will be the same. So, well, uh, the intention of this, pro, of this presentation was to was to present uh, the methodology and formulation uh, for, for addressing heterogeneizing uh, heterogeneizing consumer preferences, but just to illustrate the kind of inferences that we might make from the result of this formulation, I add here a, 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 the, the, the result of a synthetic data, just with few number of the, to the consumers, only four consumers, which uh, evaluated around 30 alternatives over three criteria. So the result of one of those criteria is, is represented here. Using the statistical models, which is the most commonly method in uh, addressing heterogeneity in the marketing literature, we are only focusing on the weight of, of this criteria for each of the consumers. If the consumers are significantly different in the way that they are valuing this attribute, but here, not only the weight can be viewed, but also the pattern that they have over each of the criteria. 
it can also be visualized. So they have, they, we will obtain a more clear insight regarding the heterogeneity in the consumer preferences. And uh, in addition to that, we are not restricted to linear models like the hierarchical base or the multinomial logic models, etc. And I think the rest of the inferences could be uh, straightforward to make. So, to conclude, we presented a, a, a framework for modeling how to heterogeneity in consumer preferences or methodology can obtain nonlinear value functions. We don't have any a priori assumption on the distribution of the parameters, like in the Bayesian methods or statistical methods. And for the future uh, studies, we can think about other meaningful distances, not to limit ourselves to Malinovis distance, but maybe some other distances with desired properties. We can think about not only non-linear, non but also non-monotonic value functions, and the te technical issues that uh, might be considered while by, by you're dealing with massive data sets. So thank you for okay. your attention. Thank you very much. Questions? Okay. Yeah, what? Yeah. Go on. So, uh, you mentioned that you have a hypothesis of monotonicity of plants. Yeah. So it means that you have also the, the hypothesis that all consumers have the same monotonicity. Or it, I mean, it's an increasing inverse yeah, or that's increasing right. for all yeah. consumers. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's right, but I'm not sure if this can be viewed. Yeah, obviously maybe this maybe is the power of a cow, maybe some people have an increasing yeah. interest and all the other Yes, that's right. This is very nice, yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Also related with like consensus models, maybe we can also think about this. You know, in terms of consensus, to go also in this one because basically when you try to get the consensus, is the same kind of logic of trying to find groups of people with the same with the same thing. So it might be useful to look at the field of the consensus to see something interesting that they have. Oh, you know. Thank you very much, and we go to the last one, which is me, and then we pass time. I'll start. Uh, I'll start now with the uh, with the thing. So uh, he, this work was done mostly for, from the. Uh, people from psychology, you know, they are psychologists, and I just helped them a little bit with the booking criteria model. So they they were the ones who did like the the weights and the the, 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 the extraction of knowledge, let's say. Probably this thing. I'm sorry, this is problem with the Like they wanted to measure it, to, to measure in the sense of like evaluating like how the, the, the person, you know, because they are psychologists, the, the connection between like the person and the, the one in, in driving. And then you have all these technologies, like you have these things on the glasses that display certain things and how you will be distracted by these things. So they were interested on these connections in turn. Like the primary task, of course, is like driving. And nowadays you have lots of things like even this one like instrumentation, you have like uh, the, the radio, you have the air conditioner, you have the, the, the tom tom like to have the, the maps. And so it's all like we are driving, it wants to be safe while driving and the, all these technologies are coming into, into motion and the, how, how do they affect the primary task which is to drive safely. You know, that's, that's what they were looking for. So they were trying to see how innovative were these technologies? In the, 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 they evaluated like 100 and, the, and one the different technologies from these ones, like traffic information, spider gestures control, wireless, blah, 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 television, and so on. And uh, we are being overloaded with all these technologies, and we are forgetting like the primary task, which is to drive safely. And of course, if you have lots of things that they are developing, and 
then it's very bad for you because it distracts you. And it's not really a good technology, even though it could be an interesting product, but it will not be good for this type of thing. So how do we balance, basically that is, was the question, how do we balance between making novel IDs for technologies available to the value without compromising the primary task of safely driving to a destination? And imagine like in this one, see immediately the person starts getting distracted by something, you know, connected to something or whatever, you know. And some of them are even more disruptive, let's say. Uh, so the goals were to identify some of these products and they evaluated 100 possible technology sensor software. They were not, you know, they, it was not just like these things. They also evaluated like softwares, technologies, stuff like that, and products that are uh, the thing. And then here, you know, okay, they just use like a simple multi-criteria decision-making problem to, to, to see. And uh, so that here they use like eight qualitative criteria. They use a scale of one to seven from the Likert scale. They, they, and they did like seven group section. And what they had, it was like people from agronomy, people like from these technologies, that was the people that they got together and they made them evaluate this type of, the, of the, and the, from here they took like 24 ranked technologies. So the criteria, it was like interaction novelty with applicability, not restricted, and the liberal inclusion of criteria like complete solutions, components, and so on. So that was the model. They had a team decision-making approach. They made a direct scoring using this scale, and then they did a direct scoring also for the alternatives, and then it was the aggregation. These were the criteria, okay, like safety, potential to improve primary task, potential to improve secondary, so they were putting these questions to the people, to this team, and then the people would evaluate individually. Then they would collect this information, and then they would each one would explain how they did it and why they did it, and then they would aggregate and everybody would have to agree if it was okay or not. That's how they, they went by. So that was the evaluation project, you know. And uh, so I was trying to see, yeah, like for instance, the rating was done like something like that. I strongly disagree or I strongly agree. That was the way they did it. And the participants were done with this kind of statements like this technology can improve driving performance in the sense of primary tech. This was the type of question that it was asked for them. They had like a kind of facilitator to, to make the study with this uh, for the technologies. So this was what was evaluated. You know, this was just the kind of, of the thing. And the, in the choice phase, so the normalized alternative purpose is that it was done using like a, with a, a weighted average. And then from this weighted average, they just collected with the normal. They considered that everybody that was classifying was equal weighted. So there was no, no one more important when they were classifying. So in the sense that one was just an arithmetic link that they did after. The important thing was that after being done this study on the multi-criteria approach, they started seeing they had like 24 technologies that they, they, they started seeing that there was like a kind of trade-offs between them. And so after that, they started using some clustering techniques on the top quartile, and they, they tested this criteria. And uh, that was like a kind of surprise even for themselves, you know. The ranking with the multi-criteria model, for them it was important to have, and then they started seeing why is this one more important than the other one. And then they did this clustering work on them. So this was like the criteria, uh, the criteria one. So further analysis of the top of the 24. So after that, they selected the 24. These were the criteria, as I said, and these are the 24, you know, the, the ones. And from here, okay, so when they did the clustering, they immediately start seeing that it was like two major, like, clusters, okay? And so <clears throat> that was the ones. And then, as you can see, this kind of more yellowish one is a kind of more dominating so, uh, solution here, while the blue one is there, and so on. And from, from there, they could uh, see this, for instance. There was a first trade-off, okay? Here, on the, on, the, on the best solution, they had these two things there, and if you look at the, the, the criteria that are here, okay, safety, okay, because this is one is safety, improves the primary task, and also has like a kind of wow in the, study, in the sense that it's an interesting technology, and also some kind of added value. 
So this was a kind of trade-off between these two that they, they found out on this one, on the first one. And for instance, I, there was an example here, it was the augmented reality. It was these ones that project on the glasses, you know, this type of, this was one of the examples. It was the ones that you have like the speed and so on that is projected on the glass on top of the car. And then on the second one, the, the second trade-off that they also start finding out is that a mo with a moderate decrease in safety, so this is not like the best solution, that improves a lot the secondary task of the high technical feasibility, okay? So you, wanna, you have a trade-off that if you have a little bit less safety, you can have, you, you have some technologies that work not, much better, you know, in terms of like technical feasibility and stuff like that. And so <clears throat> that was the, the second study that they had. So they had these two, and here you see like the display, the augmented reality, touch screens and haptics and so on. And you can see more or less the sizes in some of them. And this is just to, to show like how they did it on the, on the thing. Then conclusions, I'm, I'm really fast now. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the MCDM approach allowed the selection of the top classified and then to start studying the, the criteria trade-offs, okay? So many of these technologies that are in the deep in the secondary task may be more feasible with only a moderate decrease in other criteria, but at the cost of safety. So you have to decide if this is a good thing or not, because might not be, you don't, might not want to compromise on that one. And of course, that has an effect in the primary task. And then the interesting thing on this study it was like the, the multi-criteria approach with the clustering helped in systematically exploring the problem domain. And this is a thing that when you are doing big data, this is very interesting, is that many times you don't know exactly because you have lots of data and you need to study to, to, to do it. And uh, one of, of the of, uh, interesting things on doing like technologies and new tools and having new tools to do it is to explore the problem so that the decision makers in the end can make better decisions because they explored a little bit the solutions on the problem, okay? And uh, <clears throat> there it is, like produced important business model and they are currently validating the finding and considering some of the applications in terms of psychology. And that is it, so if you have any questions. <laughs> No, they, got, they did not do that yet. You were saying mm -hmm. like if you have two, then it, when, then it was even worse. Yes, yeah. they, they found out like for instance the worst ones that in terms of safety, it was like a, where you have like two interactions, like a, moving something exactly. or whatever, because that really distracts you from the from the driving. Okay. And the related question: Did you did you take into account using mobile devices in the car? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> they they, they, uh, they analyzed all that. And the uh -huh. mobiles and so on. They were the, they did. That's why they selected like 100, you know, and one technologies. Even some of them just like software that is still already currently. Mm -hmm. But they even another analyze those ones in terms of, of those criteria. Maybe just a comment with all these intelligent uh, vehicles. Maybe driving will become a secondary issue sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> When, when it's automated, yes. then, then it can be a secondary issue. At the moment, it's still the primary issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you all for coming and let's close the session. We are perfectly on time to go to the bus.